there's only one person in recorded history with proof of surviving being hit by a meteorite. Her name is Anne Hodges. Sylacauga, a town in central northeastern Alabama, is known as the Marble City because of its marble quarries. It was there on a bright, chilly day on November 30th, 1954, that Anne Hodges was taking an afternoon nap, swathed in quilt on her sofa in her rented home. At 2.46 p.m., it happened. A large rock came crashing through her ceiling, bounced off her radio, and struck her in the upper thigh, leaving a massive pineapple-shaped bruise. The rock was an 8.5-pound or 3.8-kilogram meteorite and was still warm to the touch. Local residents and people all across eastern Alabama had witnessed the incoming meteorite. They reported seeing, quote, a bright reddish light like a Roman candle trailing smoke, while others reported incredible explosions that stemmed from, quote, a fireball like a gigantic welding arc. Others heard tremendous explosions and saw a brown cloud accompanying the fireball. A government geologist working in a nearby quarry visited the property and concluded that the object was a meteorite. However, many thought a plane had crashed and others suspected something nefarious by the Soviets. In the photo, Hodges is seen lying on a hospital bed being examined by a physician named Moody Jacobs. The doctor had just assured her that, although severely bruised and swollen, she was well and without severe injuries. The giant bruise on Anne's left side is readily apparent. The photo was taken by Jay Leviton, a freelance professional photographer based out of Atlanta, Georgia, for Time Life Publications. Leviton became famous a few years later for his photographic essay on rising rock and roll star Elvis Presley. It didn't take long for word to get out about how Hodges had been hit by what people were calling a space rock. Her home became ground zero for curious locals who wanted to catch a glimpse of her large bruise and the meteorite that caused it. News networks from all over the world were clamoring for an interview with Hodges. Many more photos were taken of Hodges, her famous bruise, and the meteorite. Photos were also taken of the hole in her roof where the meteorite had shot through, although it looked rather small. The government had a particularly keen interest in what Hodges had experienced. The U.S. military suspected that the meteorite might have actually been a chunk of a secret Soviet satellite, or worse, even a weapon. To her dismay, the authorities confiscated the rock. She would later say, quote, I feel like the meteorite is mine. I think God intended it for me. After all, it hit me. A few days later and a few miles away from where Hodges was struck, a local farmer named Julius McKinney was driving his mule-drawn wagon when a strange rock in the road caught his attention. Having heard what happened to Hodges, the farmer immediately sold the stone with the help of a lawyer, making enough money to buy a house and a car. Once the military had finished their analysis of the meteorite a few months later, they were prepared to return it to Hodges. Except that now her landlady, Bertie Guy, was claiming ownership of the rock since the meteorite had landed on Guy's property. The law was on the landlady's side, but public opinion wasn't. Guy sued Hodges, and they settled out of court, with Hodges paying Guy $500, nearly 4000 by today's standards, for the meteorite. Not long after, Hodges received a call from the Smithsonian Institute, which wanted to buy the meteorite. Hodges and her husband turned down the museum's modest offer, hoping to instigate a bidding war. However, it was the first and only offer they would receive. Anne wound up donating the piece to the Alabama Museum of Natural History two years after the meteorite crashed through her ceiling. She didn't make a cent. Anne suffered a prolonged nervous breakdown after all the commotion had passed and had to be hospitalized. Her marriage ended in divorce in 1964. Just eight years later, Hodges died of renal failure in a nursing home in Sylacauga at only 52 years of age. Her ex-husband Eugene would later suspect that the meteorite and frenzy that ensued had taken no toll on Anne. According to the museum, Eugene said she never did recover from the event. 
Museum director Randy McCready would add, quote, Anne wasn't the person who sought out the limelight. The Hodges were just simple country people, and I really think that all that attention was her downfall. Hodges being hit by that meteorite was indeed miraculous. The lifetime odds of being killed by a regional meteorite are 1 in 1,600,000. 1, Michael Reynolds, a Florida State College astronomer and author of the book Falling Stars, A Guide to Meteors and Meteorites, commented, quote, Think of how many people have lived throughout human history. We have a better chance of getting hit by a tornado and a bolt of lightning and a hurricane all at the same time. In 2017, a 10.3 gram piece of the same meteorite that struck Hodges was sold at auction in Christie's in New York for $7,500, more than 18.5 times the price of gold. It should be noted that the fragment sold at auction wasn't actually part of the rock that ricocheted into Hodges' home. The auction piece was part of the stone that was picked up by Julius McKinney, which the Smithsonian had acquired from him soon after. Years later, the house where Anne was hit by the meteorite caught fire and was later demolished. Today, a historical marker stands in Oak Grove near the spot of the Hodges house on the old Birmingham Highway, and the Hodges meteorite is on display at the University of Alabama. <laughs>